God has for Pastor Glenn to uh, share with us. And so without further ado, I'm going to yield my uh, stance to him. Say amen to him. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. He blessed us to go and to come back and we had, had a wonderful time. Uh, wonderful time. I, I would receive uh, probably, if not the greatest that I've ever received, uh, no greater uh, rec recognition or award uh, by a chapter that I, I wasn't even initiated in that chapter, but I started there. I started there at that school. And then because of um, uh, satanic control of my life, uh, uh, got kicked out of the school and didn't get to play there and I played somewhere else. But uh, they gave what you call the true, true growth. True Brother Award, and I received that. I received that, that award. There's nothing greater to me that a person can say about you except that, that you care about people or that you uh, try to help people. Yeah. You try to help people. Of course, you don't do it for a reward, but it, um, it, it just felt, it felt real good. And uh, in the moment, I didn't really, because you know, you're kind of nervous and that in the moment, but go back and look at it. And Lady Deborah told me, she said, the brother showed you a lot of love. Mm -hmm. Because even in the, uh, the, the recording, I saw where uh, the charter line, where all of them stood and all of them. And, and um, it's just good to see God working in your life. Yeah. Yeah if you can recognize it as God. Yeah. Now, when you start thinking it's you, then you got a problem. Yeah. You got a problem when you start thinking you good. Or uh, that look at how, how good things I've done. You got a problem. You, you really do. The Bible talks about, Paul says that I am crucified with Christ. And we know that the cross is about uh, death. It's about death. It's about something none of us like. Even when I bring it up, I said tonight, but I was almost dead. Mother, Mother Brewer talking about, don't say that, you know, whatever. And then I, but you know what? I'm not going to live like no fool. I'm going to die. Yeah. And I'm going to live like I'm going to die. Now, I ain't trying to rush it or nothing like that. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't run out in front of transfer trucks. I don't mess with foolish folks and everything. I'm not trying to rush it or nothing like that. But uh, I see so many people who die, and, and you know they were taking trips and going here and going there, and now somebody got to do a GoFundMe to pay for you. It, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. It's not a look good. The Bible says in First Corinthians, the first chapter, said Jesus is our wisdom. See, we are without excuse. We're without excuse. You might have been a fool all your life, but once you receive Christ, it's no more you. But it's Christ that's in you. And so he gives you. I ain't going to tell you nothing. I ain't going to show it to you. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. The problem, mother none, that we have, we have a crisis. We have a crisis. And that is, you have people who don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth, teaching other people. And Jesus said, that the blind, if they be blind, leaders of the blind, they both fall in a ditch. See, Brother Ross, man, the worst thing in the world is a person that think they know. You got a much better chance with a person who realized, well, you know, I ain't never done this, so I don't know. But a person who been taught wrong, you, they got to unlearn. And I had to do that when I came to Manasseh. I had to unlearn all of the stuff that I had been taught because I took it for truth. I read Romans 3 over and over again. We, we, we went through the book of Romans. And Romans 3, when I had to read it over and over again. Do this really mean what it's saying? Because in Romans 3, it says, Now without the law is the righteousness of God revealed. Without the law? 
how can you be righteous without the law? Because I thought that the law was what you made, what made you righteous. If you did what the law said, then you was right. But how many know that God's ways are not our ways? And his thoughts are not our thoughts. They are so much higher. It's just like when we're coming up as, 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 as little children, we do better when we realize that we don't know what our parents know. But the day we think that we know what they know is a problem in the house. Because their thinking is so much further than I was his baby. I already been where you trying to go. If you would just listen to me, I love you. If you would just listen to me, I'm trying to keep you from falling in two. And don't let them find out that you fell off in a ditch. See, baby, I'm trying to keep you from falling in some of the ditches I fell in. Just because I fell in it don't mean that I want you to. Oh, Paul, they go down to maybe verse 29, something like that. First Corinthians, the first chapter. We are, we are without excuse. He says, <clears throat> but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us. This is when we become new creations. See, the Bible says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. What do you believe? Not this foolishness they have told us. Well, you got to give your life to God. God don't want you to give your life no nasty life. That life is dead. He, you, you, what, what, what do I believe? I believe the gospel. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 15, chapter, verses 1 through 4, he said, I, I give unto you that which I received, the gospel which I received, how that Christ died for our sin, was buried, and was resurrected. And so then uh, we believe that, Brother Carl Ray, the only way, that God will receive us is through the actions of Christ. He said in John the 14th chapter, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through me. So then I must believe that what he did, dying upon the cross, he took, he was made sin. He not only died for sin, God made him sin for us. And he took that sin down to where sin is judged, and he stayed there until all the, the, the penalty for sin had been paid, and the death, the, 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 uh, the grave couldn't hold him because he was God Almighty. And so then, God, he was, uh, he, he was justified. The Bible said that he was justified in the spirit. And God resurrected him from the dead. And matter of fact, the Bible calls him the firstborn from the dead. And actually said, this is my, my son that I have begotten. And so when Tara, he was raised from the, grind, the, 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 the uh, earth, from death, then that was our justification. Paul even said that if Christ is not rise, you are yet in your sin. The only thing that keeps us from being in our sin is not because we go to church. Not because we pay our tithes. Not because we've been baptized in Jesus' name. But the only thing that keeps you from being in your sin right now is the fact that he got up. He was resurrected, and you got up with him because you believed unto righteousness. You believed that this, that he did, for no reason. He didn't do it because you was a good person, because the Bible says, 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 when we were yet without strength, he died for us. So you see, none of it had anything to do with us, but it had everything to do with him. My children have talked to me since they've been grown, as both they had since. They have talked to me in such a way that if I didn't love them, I would never say nothing else to them. But love. Yeah. Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter in the 13th verse. He talks about love keeps no record yeah. of the injuries and the insults and that, that's done to it. He says, love never fails. 
And so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You see, you have people that are teaching incorrectly and are crippling people because people think they know something they don't know. And you don't know how to rightly divide the word of God. The word, all the word of truth, all of the Bible is truth from Genesis to Revelation. But all of the truth is not to us. It's for our learning. We can learn from every word that God has in that Bible. But every word is not to us. And so he says, of him are ye made, he made us wisdom. It's not my wisdom, but I got God's wisdom now. Whereas I didn't know how to do certain things, God taught me. The old saints used to talk about, said they didn't know how to spell their name, Carl Ray and Big Box Carl Letters. Didn't know how to read, but I, 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 I know people like that. They couldn't do that, but they could read the Bible. They couldn't read nothing but God's word. God made, Jesus became my wisdom. And that's the reason, Lady Deborah, that they sang that song sometimes. Said, give me Jesus. Just, just give me Jesus. I'll be all right. You, I, I may not have houses and land. I may not have the degrees that you got. And all this, my name might not be big like this. You, you see how now everybody want to put these letters behind their name. As, 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 but you see, Paul said in Philippians, the third chapter, all this stuff that he had and everything, he said, I counted it as nothing. But look what's going on now. Folks is making up names, friend. Folks, doctor this and doctor, you ain't no doctor. Doctor this and doctor that and whatever. But Paul had the doctor. All right. And he said he counted it as nothing. He said, I put it all that aside that I may know him. Yeah. I might know him. Ain't no use us coming to church, y'all, and don't know the truth. Yeah. Ain't no use us coming to And you don't know the truth if you don't know how to divide, rightly divide the word of truth. Give me Ephesians, the first chapter, maybe about uh, a verse. Ephesians 1. I don't even see it, lady. That's what it said about the word of truth. Oh, okay. It's 13th verse. I'm going to start at the 7th verse. You have that thing? Here it talks about the benefits of being in Christ. You have what you need. You have what you need. Have you ever uh, been looking for something and found something else? So oh, this is where this this is where this is right here. What you don't know will hurt you. Don't let nobody tell you what you don't know won't hurt you. What you don't know, ain't no blessing in being ignorant. Paul said over and over again, he said, I would not have you ignorant. Yeah. I'm not have you ignorant. You, you, you see, our faith is based on truth. It ain't based on no suspicion or nothing like that. And you know, let, let me show you. They got this foolishness now where they like the preachers like that in order to get y'all uh, emotions going. They like to tell you something. Man. Your, your latter days are going to be greater than your form. I'm 67 years old. I never will feel as good as I felt when I was back then. They're doing my line. They're doing my line. That, that, that right there is my, it's, a, it's some things after you get so old that's behind you and you're not going to recapture them no more. Yeah. You sit up there and talk to everybody in the congregation and tell them something. Money is coming to you. Faith come by hearing, and hearing the word of God. Why, why do you have to go get something else besides God's word? Is God's word not good enough for us today? Why do we got to go and try to tickle the people's ears and, and make them happy with, with, with foolishness and everything? The worst thing in the world is to believe something that's a lie, and then when the test comes, you find out that everything you don't believe. None is so blind as he that won't see. God let the pandemic come through here and it made a lie to everything they were teaching and they went right back to lying. <laughs> ain't nobody admitted they was wrong. I ain't heard. Ain't nobody admitted that no, I wasn't, maybe I wasn't dividing the, the, the scriptures right. Maybe that scripture right there is not for us. Maybe it's not. Ephesians or the 7, it said, in whom we have redemption through his blood 
the forgiveness of sin. Poor lady, she thought she was making a big point when she went over in Acts, the third chapter, when it talks about that salvation will come at the time of refreshing. She said, y'all ain't, you ain't saved now. You ain't saved yet. Your salvation is coming. And, and I, I pulled her to the side and kind of told her, I said, ma'am, I said, he was talking to the nation of Israel then. I said, they had been promised a kingdom, and the kingdom was still uh, uh, being offered to Israel at that time. And they had to endure until the end because the tribulation was coming through, and they had to reject the mark of the beast, the mark of the Antichrist. In order, I said, but now the Bible tells us that there is, there, there is therefore now. No con I run up out of here. There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. It grieves my heart how many people, everybody want to be a teacher, and you don't know what you're talking about. It, it, it's, it's bad when you lead somebody else astray. If you ignorant, be ignorant by yourself. But, but you know what? It's hard. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I'm beginning to understand more and more that pride, pride, Pride is the only thing that will keep you from God helping you. Because he says he gives grace unto the humble. Humble only means that you accept the truth. Humble don't mean you walk around with your head down, uh, looking sanctified and, and putting yourself down. No, uh -uh. Humble only means that you are accepting the truth. What's the truth, Pastor? The truth is it ain't a man living that can help himself. There's some area in your life that you just a flat foot low life in. That, there's some things that there's an area you might not you might not fall for this, but and you might not fall for that like 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 Harry, but then there's an area over here where like I said, you just a flat foot low life. There's some mothers that if you mistreat their children the right way, they cussing everybody out in the church. And don't care, I know what I'm talking about. I don't care who don't know it. Don't care who that the pastor is. And pastor, they, they be the cuss pastor out. Pastor better take his. Come on, y'all. In whom we have redemption. Look what he says that we have. We have. Now, you have to live by faith. They are carnal people. Why you say they carnal? They carnal because they are basing their life upon what they can do. Yeah. And there's an end to you. You can go so far. But there's an end to you. I run up out of him, but there is no end to my God. My he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is Jehovah Olam. He, there is no beginning. They can search back Mother Nun as far as they want to go. And they had glory, and they won't find where he started. They, can't, they, they won't find where he started, and they won't find where he ended. Uh-uh. So he says, um, according to the riches of his grace. I want to talk tonight. I'm talking to you about by grace through faith, that not of yourselves. But you need to always understand that the only reason you stand in the ears is by his grace. Yeah. You have to understand that, 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 that God never has been a debtor to man. God don't owe you nothing. And he had to get Job straight about that. Job actually think. Job, Job began to add up, Mother Nun, the ledger. On one side, he was looking at all he had done. And I don't just I'm looking over here at where my life and what, what I have come. But you know what? When, when you realize, even you don't have to go to God, look at your mama. When you, if you, if you ever thought about that, that if you tried to pay your mama back, but, but Shirley Caesar had a song about that. She said, well, let me see. You, 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 you cannot pay back love. And so he says, uh, 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 according to the riches of his grace, wherein he have abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto the, us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on, on earth, even in him. Lady Deborah, look, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. 
in whom also we, brother, brother, brother Tom, we in uh, Ephesians 1 and uh, 11. In whom we have obtained an inheritance. Let me tell you something. You living in a time of the most scriptural ignorance. See, see, the problem you have is when you have people who think they know. We living around folks now because they got the internet, they think they know everything. And, and, because, and because, I believe, Brother Thomas, we have more material possessions. When we didn't have as much, you could tell us something. But now we got automobiles, two or three out in the yard, and we got houses. Uh, I'm surprised sometimes when I go to folks, I didn't know you lived in a house this big. They got all this, and, and you can't tell them nothing. You, you can't tell them nothing. See, see humility... I, I, I had a friend one time, a Brother Carl Ray, he said his daddy told him, he said, son, it's enough you don't know to make another world with a basement in it. But when you think you know everything, everything, can't nobody help you. He says, in, him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being pre pre predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things, after the counsel of his own will, by grace through faith, that not of ourselves. What that means, Brother Thomas, is, is that when God decides to do something, he don't check with nobody. I need to tell you that again, because that, that went over about four folks' head, who they've been telling you that before God can bless you, uh, they got, you got to check with them. I, I need to let you know that, that God don't check with nobody. He don't check with the credit report, Chance America, or whatever. I got about seven folks here. You got a house, and your credit report was just flat foot raggedy. Your record was raggedy. Wasn't nobody supposed to trust you? Wasn't nobody supposed to let you have it? But God, in his sovereign will, the Bible says he does things according to his will and his purpose. I love the song that said, I know the Lord. We'll make a way. Somehow. Somehow. God will. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. What do you mean by trusting in Christ? You got this foolishness now. Do you believe that God, that Christ is the son, the son of God? Do you believe that? See, but, but you see, the devils believe and tremble. No, 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 no. When he says trust Christ. He's talking about Carl Ray, trusting him with your eternal destiny. Yeah. I got a friend whose dad is dying. Y'all, somebody die every day. It's your time now. You know, you, you just thought my dad was going to die. You didn't know yours was going to die. And when now, now his dad is dying, and he, he said, pray for my dad. Pray for me. I said, no, don't pray for your dad. He pray for you. I want to pray for you that you can come in the truth. You see, why is why you saying that, Pastor? I'm saying that because he give of grace unto the humble. You, you see, that's the reason that the, the old people used to put it like this right here. They say, get, get you somewhere, get your prayer closet, get down on your knees. You see, because then you have stopped your work. You, you have ceased trying to do to go to this one and go to that one and, and do it. Now you're going to see, what did the Lord say about it? And, and once you get there, and I told him this, Mother Nun, I told him, I said, look, I said, I said, brother, I said, he has provided eternal life. It's okay. It's okay. Christ went through death. Your folk gonna die, my folk gonna die, I'm gonna die. But that's joy on the other side. Yeah. We don't sorrow and say, well, we miss him. Oh, we miss it. But you, but you see, God will comfort you. God will comfort you, and he will give you peace that passeth all understanding. That's the reason I'm here tonight. I'm here tonight to get my mind right. I can't get my mind right. Now, 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 now in law school, you hear all law school, that they bless me to be able to make a good living. A good living. But they can't help get my mind right. Some of them more foolish than, than, than the folks that ain't got no education. Yeah, see, 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 God 
is a spirit. Yeah. And they that worship him. I told y'all worship means is to give him his true worth. Yeah. Mm, glory to God. Everybody don't know who God is. I don't care how many times you've been to church. I don't care how, what your title is. I don't care how many folks is bound down to you in the robes. You, everybody don't know God. The old people used to tell us, Brother Thompson, you better know him for yourself. Yeah. You better know him for yourself. You're going to need him. You're going to need to know who God is. When the storms come, Lady Deborah, Lady Deborah, and I'm telling you something, sometimes a storm come about or nothing. The sun is shining, and, and it come about or nothing. You know what? We, we were at the place the other night enjoying ourselves and everything. I looked around. You were gone. I got mad. I said, well, where's she at? You're walking off from daddy. You, you need to tell daddy where you're going before you move and, and move and everything. But when she came back, Jack, and she told me about the news that she had said, I couldn't talk right here. I had to go. It come about out of nowhere. I believe. I believe in dressing nice. I believe in riding nice. I believe in preparing yourself to be financially secure. But I also believe that ain't none of that nothing. Hey, glory to God. Somebody put it like this. They said, be sure and very sure that your anchor holds. You won't need to know him when it hits you. Paul told them, he said, we don't need to get out here on this water right now. We was in Fair Havens. Let's stay here and everything. No, but the people wouldn't listen. And many times, Mr. Thomas, you get attached to folks that won't listen. You wouldn't go, but you attached to them, so now you got to go into this foolishness. They said, oh, no, ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing. But then a storm came through called Eurachlodon. Eurachlodon came out of nowhere and told them ragged. I got about four folks here. That storm that hit you, brother, but I'll tell you what. But God sometimes have to give us a lick, a whooping that we won't forget. So next time, you won't do this right here. And it looked like all was lost, Sister Tara, but he told him, he said, look, he said, Jesus came and stood by me. And he told me, he said, look at here. Tell the people. Let me just go on down to Elaine. Tell the people. Tell them, say, 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 just stay with the ship. If you, I'm here tonight because I want to stay with this ship. I want to. What did he tell Jeremiah? Jeremiah said, tell him. said, go and seek for the old path. Don't worry. Don't give me none of this new stuff right here. I don't need none of this new age stuff they've got. I want the Jesus that my mama believed in. I want the Jesus that took my grandmama home. He said, now, you ain't going in the way you came out. Some are going to come in on little boards and little sticks. But whatever you got, hold on to that. Sister, Sister Bland, they used to tell us like this right here. They said, hold on what you got. Lord, you don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about, baby. We can go get any kind of furniture we want tonight. And, and find us our house and some more folk house. But I remember when we had to go to the credit folk to buy what rent the own folk and pay twelve hundred dollars for a hundred dollars. Thank you. Hey! hey, glory to God! But he said, "Hold on, what you got? Don't despise small giving. They ain't gonna never make it. You know what? It's been thirty-four years since I had any crack, had any crack. But I told the Lord, if you deliver me, I'll never be ashamed to tell you from where you brought me from." You can laugh and snicker and joke, but baby, when I look back over my life and I see where God brought me from, my soul cries out, hallelujah. The old saint said, joy bells keep ringing down in my soul. I, I thank myself happy. I don't have to have no organ. I don't have to have no preacher grabbing his ear back. But I'm going to tell you what, I can thank myself happy. I was out and he brought me in. I was crazy and he gave me good sense. God will give you your integrity back. He, he will do it. He, he says, verse 13, ye also trusted. After that you heard 
the word of truth, the gospel of your soul salvation, in whom after that you believed. That's all God asks you to do is believe. And matter of fact, uh, when he was telling him in the Old Testament Torah, he told him, he said, okay, I want you to make the altar, but I don't want you to put none of yourself in it. Don't put your hand on nothing. He said, just, just out, of, out of one stone. Don't you try to fix it up or nothing. You see, it took a long time for me to realize that you can't start in the spirit and then be made perfect in the flesh. I'm through with church folks. I'm through with church folks. I'm not, I ain't got a quarter for you. That's what my daddy used to say. I ain't got a quarter. I don't. I'm not helping you to build a kingdom or, or do nothing like that. I don't care if y'all don't have no church. You ain't doing nothing no way. I'm, I'm not. That's just that's how I feel about it. Uh-huh. I'm a good steward. I'm a good trustee. Just because I got some money, I'm not going to the mall. And whatever. I might, my, when these light bills and stuff is going up, I don't know what. And I, and I don't want to have to come to you and ask you for nothing. It'd be a burden on you. But now, he said, after you heard the word of truth. Now, let me say this right here. You have to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Uh, one of the many things that our personal trainer, Nate the Great, Mr. Thomas, uh, told us today was, he said, all them people, who came at the first of the year, talking about, okay, I'm ready now to get in shape. All of them gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And many are called, but few are chosen. Yeah. You see? And so, uh, Jesus talked about the seed, Mother Nun. Some fell among the thorns. Yeah, people let things. You got the whole. <sighs> Everybody think they so strong, but I know you've been around a little longer than me, mother. Never seen so many weak folks in my life. People are weak. They fret, they offended over nothing. And let me tell you what, your feelings is designed to make a fool at you. Your feelings. Your feelings are designed to make a fool at you. I spent yesterday with my wife. We had such a beautiful day and everything. Every now and then, reaching over, rub. You know, I can't do too much more than that now. Reach over and rub. So I ain't by myself. Just keep living. I reach over and rub. You know, you know. We had such a good time. We went and ate. I did all the things I know she liked and everything. We ate. Then you know, uh, said, "Well, you want to go over to the store over there now?" And I think, "Come on, come on." Went over to the store and let her buy whatever she wants to and everything. I even let her, you know, eat out of my plate. I hate that. <laughs> I know what she like, though. She know what I like. Sometimes she give it to me, sometimes she don't. But that was the day that I decided, well, you know what, I'm just going to be sweet today. So, baby, you want some of this? Well, I would like some of that right there recently. But on the way back. We got another thing coming up next week and everything. So she says, uh, what's this? Uh, that tuxedo that you bought a few months ago, is it pants here? I don't know. Well, that's what I want you to wear them Saturday night. The devil just rose all up in me. <laughs> you want me to wear it? They got them there to tell me, well, you know, they want us to wear black. Well, I don't give a black to black. What they want you to wear? That's y'all, I don't. But I'm still trying to act like I'm still in the same spirit I was in. But the spirit that left me. Because I'm thinking, you trying to control me? You trying to, I'm a heck of a man. You don't tell me what, tell me what to wear? You dressed Bama Jr. in them back then. You don't dress me. You feel it. Your feelings is designed to make a fool out of you. And if you don't know the word of God, and if you can't humble yourself, yeah. and Lady Deborah, I took you to the meeting last night, and I talked to Robert and them about it and everything. They listened to me. And all Robert had to tell, all Robert said to me was, wear the tuxedo. <laughs> he 
let me get all out and everything about how I felt about it and all that. All right, you listen up and looking at me like that and everything, but all of us, our feelings. We get in our feelings. If we don't hear somebody, we can't help ourselves. Because self going to keep telling you they wrong and you're trying to control me and I wear anything. And then I went so far as to say, you know what? I let her go by herself. I will go. I got other things to do anyway. I'm good enough to go with you. Did you go tell me what to wear? But the truth I needed to hear was, well, it's it just got so simple then. Here Paul says, when you heard the truth. But now Jesus says this. Watch this. I'm going to let y'all go because the Grizzlies get ready to play again. We need to win tonight. But, but it, man, I'm just telling you the truth. This, this, he, he says, when you heard the word of truth. But Jesus said, he that have an ear. That's what I tell y'all all the time. And that's ain't for everybody. This right here, when I'm preaching, make folk hate me. I ain't done nothing to them. Because what I'm telling you is, I, it ain't nice, the message that I got. This other day. What I'm telling them is, take your nasty hand off of us. You unclean. You unclean. Take your nasty hands off of it. And that's how come I could never enjoy church. Because man had his nasty hands all over everything. Ain't but one God. Ain't but one God. And if God decide that he going to speak through you, ain't nothing for you to brag about. You ain't done nothing. I got Bible on it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. We don't play if Moran ain't playing tonight. You'll do this. But you know what, uh, Mr. Tum? If the Grizzly never win another game, Golden State is down 0 2. So, hey, glory. Thank you, Jesus. I ain't heard nothing from the Golden State. You crickets. First Corinthians, the first chapter, I mean, the second chapter, second chapter I'm sorry. Deborah, where is it when they said that no, we don't, whatever we have, we gathered it from God? Okay, it's the third chapter. The third chapter, this is the last scripture. The third chapter. He says, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as on the spiritual. We studied Mr. Thomas had to keep getting adjustments. You keep having to get judgment. This world and our ego, it has something to latch on. Yeah. The, Jesus said that, that they could not get him because there wasn't nothing in him for them to latch hold of. But we got self. And they could use self to get us off Oh, oh. There's folks that need to be over here at this church, but they gave them a title over at the church they over. Ain't but three folks. But you over everything over there, so I got to stay. You need to be somewhere learning something that's going to help you to fight these battles. Okay, now watch this right here. Even more importantly, you can't teach nobody nothing you don't know. You staying over there because they let you teach Sunday school, but you ignorant. You don't know nothing. It's got to not be about us. But the only way it's not about us, Lady Deborah, is the cross is applied to us life, and there's no longer me. Paul said, if I glory, he said, God forbid I glory in anything but the cross. Because by the cross, it crucified me to myself, to the way. He said, from this point forward, let no man bother me. Well, I can honestly tell y'all, sister, now, try from my heart. I don't want nothing they got. I don't want nothing they got. When you through with somebody, you don't want nothing that they got. I know one of my favorite songs, Harold Melvin and Blue Nose, when the guy come back, he said, you know, when he talking about, oh, I, oh, I miss you. He said, you know, they got that lottery. 
I hid it. Not trying to buy your love back. Yes, you are. Don't you wouldn't even brought it up. He says, what you said, he could buy yours. <laughs> he says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. You yet want to do something yourself instead of just receiving what God has already yeah. done for you in Christ. For whereas there is among you envy, and that's what happened. When you start thinking that it's something that you do, then, then, then you looking at other people, you're not coming up to what I'm doing. This right here happened to almost everybody who parents get sick. You get mad at your siblings because they ain't doing as much as you're doing. And all you're supposed to do is what you do. But it's easy to say that. Because the first thing that comes to your mind is, it's your mama just like it's mine. It's your dad, it's just like it's mine. Now when the money gets divided up, you want to be right here then, but you don't never come. When we get into it, we bring envy, strife, and division. So are you not yet carnal and walk as me? It's not supposed to be you no more. It's Christ that liveth inside of you. While one say, if I'm a Paul and another I'm a Paulus, are you not yet carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? God gave every man a job. He said, I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. So then now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Are one. Y'all, I'm thankful for, and I'm, I'm just about to, I'm thankful for this Bible study, and I'm thankful that the word of God is true. Yes. I'm thankful for right division, Amen. where the word of God makes sense. Amen. I'm thankful that I ain't got nothing to do with it. Amen. I didn't save myself. I can't keep myself saved. I'm saved by grace. Yes. I'm saved. God don't owe me nothing. I have not done anything for God that he owed me nothing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I've been against God mm -hmm. because I've been for myself. Yeah. But because he loved me, he looked past all my faults. All right, all right. And he looked past all your faults. Yeah. And he saw our need. Clap your hands for the yeah. Lord.